Hi, I'm Georgia McClellan and I'm an illustrator and I'm here with Rob Bedolf at the Edinburgh International Book Festival. Could you tell us a bit about your latest book? My latest book is called Kevin and uh, it's actually one of the first books that I wrote but it's about a little boy, it's called Sid, who has, he keeps getting in trouble for things like leaving the lids off his felt tip pens or messing up his bedroom and instead of admitting that it was him, he blames it on this imaginary friend that he makes up who's, who's called Kevin. And, uh, and then his mum gets quite cross, sends him to his bedroom and he finds that Kevin maybe isn't so imaginary after all and he actually meets Kevin and he disappears off into the imaginary world so there's a little bit of kind of role reversal and he goes and has adventures in the imaginary world and he's actually the invisible friend there and he gets into all sorts of mischief and he learns a valuable lesson, let's just say that. Could you tell us about the character Penguin Blue? I can, Penguin Blue. So Penguin Blue, I always call him a he, but actually I'm not sure if he is a he or a she. I never specify his sex or her sex in the book. But he's uh, yeah, a little penguin who lives in the Antarctic, the South Pole, and um, he, uh, he gets himself into all sorts of adventures on a fairly regular basis. And my first book, Blown Away, he decided to go out flying a kite on a very windy day and he ended up getting blown away across the sea. And he ended up with his friends who were trying to help him. He ended up with his friends in a place that penguins aren't usually found. He ended up in the jungle and he had to think of a, of a clever way of getting back home again. He's full of good ideas, Penguin Blue, or she is full of good ideas, Penguin Blue. And in my second Penguin Blue adventure, which is called Sunk, he is playing a game of pirates with his friends and uh, he, uh, they, they fashion a pirate ship out of a kind of a rubber dinghy and then they have an unfortunate kind of incident with a swordfish and they end up getting sunk and he, he finds himself on a desert island with his friends and again he has to come up with a very good idea as a means of getting back home again. So yeah. What is the trickiest thing for you about drawing Penguin Blue and his pals? Drawing Penguin Blue and his friends? The trickiest thing about drawing Penguin Blue? Um, well, pen I'm quite practiced at drawing penguins now. I tend to draw penguins in all of the books that I sign for children, so I've drawn quite a few penguins now. So they're not too bad. I, I can do a penguin in about 10 seconds flat, I would say now. I'm polar bears are a little bit trickier to draw. I find drawing their paws and their arms very tricky for some reason. But most of the time, I can, I, you know, I've, done, I've drawn enough, I've had enough practice now that I'm, I'm pretty good. That's what it is, isn't it, with drawing? The more you do anything, the better the better you get at it. So, you know, I've drawn these characters a fair few times now, but yeah, I'd say the polar bear is the trickiest of them. And what is your favourite thing about creating their adventures? The lovely thing about it is it's using two different sides of your brain. So I find the drawing side of it much easier and that's kind of quite relaxing because I, can, I feel like I can put the music on and I can just sort of draw away and it's like something I don't really have to think about. The writing I find much trickier and it takes me a long time even though these stories that I write they only take maybe you know five or ten minutes to read they take me about six months to a year to write them so I write in rhyme and I have to get the rhyme perfect I'm a real perfectionist with that and it's very hard to convey the story in rhyme in a very short amount of pages I've only got like sort of 24 pages and so it's very hard but do you know what I find that the most rewarding side of it strangely because I think once you crack the rhyme and you crack the story and it's all working well it's just very very satisfying indeed but it's nice to balance that with the drawing side of things which is kind of much more kind of relaxing and as I said you sort of use a different side of your vein but uh, you know what I feel like I've got the, uh, the, best, the best job in the world it's such a nice thing to do and it's doubly nice when you get to come to fantastic festivals like this and meet the children that read your books and they tell you about how much they like reading them at bedtime and things like that so I feel very lucky indeed. How do you create your picture books? Or what materials do you use and methods? I create my picture books. They always start off in a sketchbook. I'm a bit of a sketchbook person, so I keep a sketchbook going, as I'm sure you probably do as well, being an illustration student. And uh, so everything starts in a sketchbook, or the characters are designed just by drawing again and again and again and honing and refining until I get them just right. And I plan the books out in the sketchbooks too. You know, I sort of do little mini versions of the book, sort of sketch the whole thing out and work out what's going on each kind of page. And, um, and then I draw the final artwork I draw on, um, on a computer. I've got a great big Wacom tablet, they're called. It's a great big tab, it's like a giant iPad, and I've got a kind of like a special pen that draws straight onto the screen. And I, and I draw everything on the computer finally, because then what happens is, if you make a mistake, you can just press, you know, undo, and it's much easier than having to start a painting again. And so it's quite a nice way to work, actually. How long does it take from starting a project until sending it to the publishers? 
Um, that's a good question. It does vary. I would say in total, probably the whole process is about a year. So I might, what I do at the beginning, when, it, when, I'm, when I'm about to start a new project, I'll go and meet with my, my brilliant editors at HarperCollins and we'll talk through, I might have five or six ideas and we'll sort of decide which one has got the most potential. Then I'll focus a little bit more on that and I'll kind of work out a story arc. As I said, I'll start sketching the characters. I might produce one of the finished illustrations for the inside of the story quite early on. But then I sort of go back and I work out the arc of the story and I start writing the rhyme, which can take a long time. Then it's a matter of planning out the book. And all of that probably takes about six months to eight months, something like that. And the actual artworking of the story, the drawing part of it, which I, which I said earlier is the kind of the really fun part, probably takes six weeks, six weeks to two months, depending on how complicated the book is. But that's the nice bit. It's really good fun. What are your top pieces of advice for someone who's interested in writing or illustrating their own picture book? Okay, well, the, the first thing sounds very obvious, but just do it. Because so many people that I've met have told me, oh, I've got a good idea for a storybook. You know, I've always wanted to write a story, but one day I'm going to do it. But they don't actually do it. They just think of it. They get the idea, and it's often a very good idea. But you actually have to go away and sit down and spend time doing it. And I think what happens a lot is people think it's easy to write a children's book, particularly a picture book, and it's really not. It's really, really hard. And I think they think it's easy, they sit down and they start doing it, and they give up very quickly. And very few people actually go all the way through and produce a dummy picture book that they can then send out to an agent or to a publisher. So my first piece of advice would be just do it. My second piece of advice would probably be talk to children a lot. You know, you have to you have to write in a voice that children want to listen to. And I think, I've got three daughters of my own, and I really genuinely think that having birthday parties at our house and having lots of children around our house means that you sort of get to know how to talk to children. You shouldn't really talk down to children. You talk to them much like you do an adult. You know, you don't, you don't treat them with respect. And I think if you know how to do that, it sort of automatically is reflected in your writing for, child, uh, for children's books. And so the voice that I use in my books is the voice that I would use to speak to children and they tend to respond really well to that. So speak to children and certainly once you've written your story, read it to as many children as you can find. And if there's any little bits that sort of they question, you really should listen to them because they are your audience. And what's next for you? What's next for me? I've got lots of things going on at the moment. I'm very busy at the moment. I've, even though my fifth picture book, Kevin, has only just came, I think it came out three days ago, I've already finished the next one after that. I had to, bizarrely, I was in this situation where I delivered book six before book five was published. So you sort of find yourself thinking, I don't know, I really, I've lost all track of time. I don't know what day it is anymore. I don't know what's going on. So that book's finished. I can't tell you what it's, I can I tell you what, it's about dinosaurs. That's about as much as I can say. I've done lots of little dinosaur characters. So that's a lot of fun. So that one's done. I've got to get the next one done by February. So that one, I'm now starting to think of my ideas and sort of hone down my various ideas with my publisher and work out what that's going to be. And in the meantime, I'm doing illustrating for other authors too. So I've just done the Flat Stanley series for um, Egmont, which was a classic book that was written in the 60s by uh, an American called Jeff Brown, who sadly has passed away now but they wanted me to re-illustrate all of his stories. So I spent a lot of time doing the first six Flat Stanley books, three of which I think are out now, three of which come out just before Christmas. So that's been a lot of fun. And I'm doing covers for lots of sort of YA and middle grade authors too. So people like, I've done books for Piers Torday and David Solomons and Christian O'Connell, lots of people like that. Jess Butterworth is a new author. He's very, very good too. So I, so I get to do lots of different kind of bits and pieces for people. So as I said, you know, so I feel very lucky to have this job. It's very varied and good fun. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us.